So everyone, last night was a big night for Brazil and the world as Lula da Silva defeated Jair Bolsonaro uh, to retake the Brazilian presidency. And there was a lot of cause for celebration. However, a certain cohort of online libs became obsessed with taking this opportunity not to celebrate this great victory, but instead to troll Glenn Greenwald under the sort of false impression, the crazy impression that he must have been really upset at these results. And so here's an example of one of these threads involving Glenn Greenwald, Edward Snowden, and David Dole. So it starts out with a tweet from someone called the Fig Economy, whoever that is. He said, this evening, spare a thought for Glenn Greenwald and how bad he must feel at Bolsonaro's loss and just fucking luxuriate in the thought of Greenwald being genuinely miserable. It's a fun thought. Who the that fuck had is the, that anyway? Who is this? We have no idea. But he had the honor of being quote tweeted by Edward Snowden, who picked up on his nonsense tweet there and said, Glenn Greenwald broke the story that freed Lula from prison. For that same reporting, Bolsonaro sought to put Greenwald in prison. He actually brought charges. Today on this site, quote, Glenn must be so sad Bolsonaro lost and Lula won. So we had some replies here, blah, blah, blah. But I recognize this one. Fellow YouTube commentator David Dole replies to Ed Snowden saying, Guess you haven't paid too much attention to Greenwald recently. And Glenn wasn't going to let that go, so Glenn replied to David. Given that we talk quite frequently, he's well aware of exactly what I do. I'm sorry you've literally never accomplished anything in your life of any value but YouTube babbling and therefore have to malign <laughs> others who have taken risks to do so. But here's Lula himself in 2020. So he quotes Lula saying, I just have to thank the journalist Glenn Greenwald who managed to prove journalistically what my defense always denounced about Lava Jato. And Globo decided to ignore... Uh, what The Intercept revealed in order to preserve the clay saint they created that is Moro. So there are some references there that you might not get unless you live in Brazil. Um, but basically what uh, Lula was saying is thanks to Greenwald for uncovering a sort of conspiracy between the Lava Jato movement and the mainstream media in order to trump up a bullshit case against me and throw me in jail. Thank you to Glenn Greenwald for helping get me out. Right. Yep. All right. So David does not address that at all in his response. And this is just so indicative. Well, well of he how can't. These people this, is, this is what they always do. It's right. what they always do. They ignore facts that don't fit what they're trying to establish. Um, let's see what David Dole presents as counter evidence. A clip from the Jordan Sheridan show. Let's play this. Here's Glenn on Tucker Carlson while Tucker Carlson tries to white, whitewash Bolsonaro. Um, but the question of American media is important here because Bolsonaro, no matter what you think of him, relies pretty much exclusively on American-owned tech platforms, Twitter specifically, to get his message out. Doesn't that make him totally vulnerable to censorship by American companies? Well, he has been repeatedly censored by big tech platforms. He, when speaking about COVID, was often censored. When speaking about the upcoming election, is often censored. So Facebook and Google are essentially dictating to Brazilians what they can and can't hear, including from their own democratically elected president. And again, no matter what you think of Bolsonaro, you should have to think that that's a pretty serious problem. And I think it's a very similar dynamic to what has happened in the U.S., where the entire establishment essentially united against Trump. And so all these institutions that liberals and the left in the United States have long held with such contempt, neocons and the security state yeah. and corporate media, all united against Trump. And suddenly they were viewed with such favor by the American left and by American liberalism. That has happened to a large extent here. A Brazilian leftists will now often talk about Globo, long, the long uh, worst enemy of the Brazilian left, with a lot of gratitude and admiration. Yeah, it's the major media company 
that has become completely hostile to Bolsonaro because, again, Bolsonaro ran on a platform of anti-establishment uh, challenge and defiance, and that's not what has been, his government is, but just the rhetoric itself has made the establishment turn against him. Putting aside, I can't speak for Glenn. Uh, just because I'm criticizing Glenn, it doesn't erase done great journalism, won a Pulitzer, uh, terrific reporting, obviously, on the NSA surveillance, his great reporting on uh, uh, Brazil and the uh, corruption. Uh, two things could be true at once. Somebody could have journalistic skills and do great journalism and suddenly become a hack. So, Okay, now, I don't want to get too sidetracked taking Jordan to task, but how does anything he said in that interview make him a hack? He didn't say anything hacky in that interview. He, he just lamented the censorship. He's anti-censorship. It, The left, this used to be something that only the libs dabbled in, and now much of the left is dabbling in this as well. They're so convinced that they are right about everything that they very much resent having to prove that they're right about something. Right. They would much right. rather censor the person who challenges them. And what Greenwald believes, even though we got into this on our stream last night, his politics are mostly left politics. He's not a self-described doctrinaire leftist, but if you go down the list, his politics are pretty left wing. His husband is a socialist politician in Brazil. OK, and so it's not a matter of where his politics are. His politics are pretty much left politics, more or less. Right. Um, but he, like I believes very strongly that everyone in a democracy, left, right, center, wherever, must be uh, made to prove their case through argument, mm -hmm. debate, right. and persuasion and engagement. No one gets to just declare by fiat that their opinion is correct and muzzle anyone who challenges them. That is what makes democracy function, the open discourse, free right. speech. Right. And so to the extent that Glenn Greenwald was defending Bolsonaro there, he was defending his right to a platform. Because even though Bolsonaro is wrong about 99% of what he says, he still has the right to express it, and it is still the responsibility of the left to prove that he's wrong. They cannot just um, put out there as a given that he is wrong, and therefore he does not have the right to say anything. That's not democracy. That's not mm -hmm. democracy. And if you don't have that open discourse, then you have nothing. And Greenwald feels that very, very strongly. And I don't understand why people have such a tough time with that. I expect this from the corporate media. I expect this from the mainstream libs. Um, it is really disconcerting and disheartening to see people like Jordan Sheridan Dole, I'm not surprised about, and we'll get into that. But to see Sheridan not understand that what Glenn Greenwald is expressing is what used to be what the ACLU represented. The idea that freedom of speech is absolute except where law prohibits shouting fire in the crowded theater, that, the classic example. Um, but other than that, yes, open forum of ideas, open forum of debate. These modern libs are not the libs of old. They are not the, I may disagree with what you say, but I'll defend to the death your right to say it, libs of, of the 60s and 70s. They're, they're not those people anymore. What Glenn Greenwald is describing, it's an ideal of free speech that people, a, a good portion of what we would consider the left, not liberal, left, doesn't seem to understand. I think it is partly generational, um, it's partly ideological with some of these people. I wouldn't say this about Sheridan from what I've seen, David Dole. There's a whole complex of these people, David Dole, Kyle Kalinske, TYT, who are lining themselves up essentially to be mainstream media figures. Mainstream media is not going to mean the same thing in 10 years that it does now. They're lining themselves up to be the successor to the Rachel Maddow's and to the Anderson Coopers. And you can see them drifting more and more into shit livery. All right, well, let's go back to David Dole here. So David Dole presented that, and now Glenn really, you know, lands, <laughs> lands his blows. 
to remind you how pathetic you are and that <laughs> for the same reasons journalists cheer Assange's imprisonment, you need to malign me because I remind you of what people do who take risks and create impact and it shames you. Claiming that clip is pro-Bolsonaro is painfully stupid. Yes, it is painfully stupid. He says he ran on populism and that's not how he's governed. Right. He even said in the clip that his actions don't match his rhetoric. Right. But just this idea that Greenwald was rooting for Bolsonaro's victory, it is painfully stupid. It is. It is. To, to, it's incredible to, to say that. It's incredible it, because what Greenwald was on the air saying in the days and weeks prior to last night's vote is that he's concerned that the polls are off because the polls proved to be way off in the initial October 2nd vote, which was the first round of voting. Right. Polls showed Lula up by 8 to 10, some even more than 10 points, and he couldn't crack 50% to prevent the runoff, to win outright on October 2nd. So therefore, the polls were off. Mm -hmm. And Greenwald was nervous that the polls were going to be off again and that Bolsonaro was going to win. So he was right. expressing that. But you right. have to be really dumb. I mean, it is well, actually a lot of pathetically it is stupid. Dumb. It is pathetically stupid to mistake concern for polling error with a desire for a certain outcome. That is extraordinarily stupid for a commentator, someone who does this for a living to make that mistake. That assumes it is a good faith mistake, which is not an assumption I should really make in David Dole's case. Well, I'm, I, and I'm gonna take a victory lap from our show last night, a half a victory lap. I haven't seen the New York Times and the WAPO coverage yet, uh, but I've seen Axios and I've seen CNN, no mention of Glenn Greenwald. In their articles about this victory, not one mention of how he got out of jail. They'll be like, right. yeah, he was in jail and uh, he made a comeback. <laughs> right. That's it. They have completely, that is Chomsky's manufacturing consent in action. You can see it in action right now. How do they maintain this very two dimensional view of Glenn Greenwald as some kind of grifting conservative in left wing clothing by not telling you the facts? Right. When Just the play facts, hide the ball with the, the evidence that runs favor, counter to that. Yeah. They don't mention it. If there was ever a news story where you should be mentioning Glenn Greenwald in a positive light, it would be this one. They just don't. They just edit him out of history. Absolutely. All right. So David responds now. Glenn, you uh, once again, does not address any of the claims that were made. Glenn, right. you went That's from breaking important yeah. news stories to name searching yourself on Twitter 24-7. Anyone that has followed you knows the obvious shift your work and commentary has taken. If you have a legitimate reason for doing that, maybe one day you can share it with us. Well, no, I don't think he made much of a shift. I think it's you guys who have made the shift. Right. The left right. is who have made the shift. The left used to care about free speech, about open debate. Um, that was a pillar of left politics until Donald Trump won in 2016. And then... Yep. It became the uh, established idea that people cannot be trusted with information and ideas. If people get the wrong information and form the wrong ideas, they have to be canceled. They have to be shut down. All right. Greenwald responds. The work I did that caused Brazil to prosecute me because it freed Lula was 2020, not 1989. You're lying when you claim I support Bolsonaro because you have never done and never will do anything of comparable value. And you know this, so disparaging me is how you cope with that. To which David Dole responds, okay. So he basically <laughs> he basically knocks down his king there and concedes the argument. That that's really what that is. That's really what that is. So that that was that was a pretty epic spat, I thought. Um and really indicative um of just a lot of what we've seen online. I mean, Greenwald is trending within minutes of Lula's victory because these these fucking idiots think that it's somehow an own. It's an own. Yeah. yeah. He's 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 gnashing his teeth and pulling his hair that the guy who if he got another term might have figured out a way to put him in prison lost. Please clap. <laughs>